from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. I am Nick Barris. It is Tuesday. How are you doing? You know, I've got my coffee here, and my good friend, our, our executive producer and the like, Rick Casebeer, brought me a piece of zucchini bread. So, you know, there are going to be times when we take phone calls or my guest is talking, and I will sample some of this zucchini bread. It's, it's you know, this time of year, zucchini is going to start coming in and all this. It's a great time of year. And this kind of ties in with our guest this morning. We are going to be talking about elder law. We are going to open up the phones for you, and we'll explain to you the field of elder law. But I've said this before, and he has helped me in so many ways over the years that Tim Takis has been coming on this program. I consider him to be one of the foremost experts in this field in the entire country. And uh, he really is terrific. The things I've learned from him about dealing with my elderly parents and preparation down the road and legal issues, invaluable. He's so knowledgeable, and he joins us now by Zoom. And a lot of people are wondering right now, Tim, when I say this zucchini, bread kind of links me to you it's not so much you but to your lovely wife Lynn which I was lamenting the fact that nowadays out of convenience you tend to join us by zoom but in the old yes. days you would come on and you'd bring your lovely wife with and she is one of the best bakers I know and I bet you she makes a mean zucchini bread yes zucchini bread muffins blueberry muffins uh, you name it uh Cookies. Yeah, we. She was working last the, the other night on uh, uh, angel food cake. Oh, oh mm -hmm. you are a lucky guy, my friend. I am. Well, it, it, tell her I said hi. It's good to have you on. We haven't seen you in a while. I think no. Barbara McGinnis was on most recently from your office, and um, yes, I just uh, wanted to touch bases with you first of all. The, the legal practice, um, just if you would, for our viewers to refresh them, and, and I do believe you are one of the best at this in the country. Um, tell them what types of things you handle that might help give them an idea if someone wants to call in with questions, but what l elder law is. Yeah, we'll do, uh, we'll do basic estate planning for older people. Typically, people come in and they maybe don't have documents, powers of attorney, wills, trusts sometimes to avoid probate, or people come in and they're worried about going into a nursing home or, you know, or as what we call asset protection. They're thinking that, well, I've, I've got a chronic illness that may in the future uh, result in my, my needing uh, veterans benefits or, or 10 care Medicaid and, you know, and they want to do some asset protection or they come in and maybe, as I mentioned, they have a chronic illness or a family member, you know, or a loved one like a spouse or a, you know, a parent come, you know, they have a, they have a chronic illness like Alzheimer's disease and they're trying to put together a plan, trying to figure out, okay, what do I need to do to make, take care of myself or take care of my spouse? You know, or if it's a child, they're coming in and how do I take care of my parents? Um, uh, I'm, you know, should I should I live with them? Should they come live with me? Should they move to assisted living? Can I keep them at home? What's the what are the options there? What are the pitfalls? Uh, how can I afford this? You know, there's a whole sort a whole range of things that you know that our families and our clients bring their worries to us. You know, and our job is to figure out how to. Uh, alleviate those worries you know and and the thing that i find <laughs> unique about what it is that you do personally and also your whole staff there it's not just the law there's a psychology of this and when i talk about things i've learned from you tim is maybe dealing with some of the more different subject or difficult subject matter that comes up like when you're approaching a loved one maybe an elderly parent about having to you've decided and they haven't accepted the fact yet they can no longer live alone and you have to move them and how you talk to them right. and how you deal with them when they start suffering memory loss and things like that mm -hmm. that's not legal stuff that's stuff you've learned i think and your staff has yes. about what to say and how to handle it that's some of the areas you've helped me more than any place else yeah and that's where a lot of our families they really need most help with um you know, unfortunately, as you hit some people when they age and they lose, you know, function and they lose mental mental capacity, the, the skills that they need, you know, to appreciate the situation that they're in, 
you know that that stuff's gone you know so they have they have to rely on others and some of them are not so accepting of the fact that you know maybe maybe things need to change maybe you need more help um you know and that's always a challenge for uh our, you know our, our clients our family members those are that that's the stuff of what we do for a living Another thing that I think is important about this show, and you've been doing it for years with us, is it's amazing to me, Tim, how many families, how many people out there, educated individuals, but they don't deal with it, so I don't blame them. I was the same way. Don't realize what really happens when you get older. There are so many people that think, okay, that Medicare is going to pay for your nursing home, or they right. think that they'll just automatically get placed when they need to, and then they mm -hmm. go in and they ask, how much is this going to cost? Oh my gosh, who right. can afford this? And they don't realize it, but there are steps you can take to set yourself up for that. But the rank and file right. does not understand that. And then when the time comes, it mm -hmm. shocks them. Yes, right. Yeah, we have people that come in and, and you know, they're looking at, uh, well, you know, if I need to move to assist living, well, like you said, Medicare will pay for that. And I say, no, Medicare doesn't pay for that. You know, that's, you know, that's health insurance, that's health care. Uh, Long-term care in an assisted living or a nursing home is not health care. That's residential care. Uh, nursing home costs typically eight to $9,000 a month. Yep. Assisted living, maybe 5000 a month. You know, and then people go, well, maybe I'll just stay living at home, you know, with maybe with assistance. Uh, and I would say, well, currently, to get a non-medical in-home care at home, if you pay for it, it's typically about three, 200 to, 250 to 300 dollars a day. Wow, which is probably a, on, a, on the low end. Well, you know, I, we've had people pay 15 to 18 thousand dollars a month for care at home. It's absolutely stunning, and I mm -hmm. guess the safety net. And this is something you helped walk me through with my own folks. Medicare does not pay for nursing, but if you get right. to the point where you're destitute, meaning that you can't save resources to give to your loved ones, you have to spend it all, uh -huh. you get to that point and you're right. in a Medicaid qualified or accepting facility, that's when they will assess mm -hmm. you. And that's in fact where my folks are. They're still paying, yeah. but when they run out of money because of where they've been, and they will run out, they, they'll have, I will get mm -hmm. no inheritance, I never expected to. But when they run out, Medicaid will pick up the majority of their tab for the assisted living facility they were in okay that's how right. it works but there are a number of hoops you have to jump through you have to make sure you're in a medicaid qualified facility you have to make sure if you're not right. that you get onto a list the only reason my folks are going to be able to transition easily is because they're already paying and have been for several years and they will transition mm -hmm. if they were on the outside looking in they'd be on a line you know 20 30 40 yes. 100 long Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We have people that think about, you know, they, they as you said, they, they, they don't know. Um, they obviously, we want them to come in so we can educate them as to what to expect. Uh, if they are in a, if, if they're say living at home or they're, you know, and saying, well, at some point I need to maybe, you know, if my, my spouse needs to go to a nursing home, then, you know, I'll just, um, you know, go over to the nursing home and, and sign them up, you know, and as you mentioned is, is that you have to be, you know, that you, you really, particularly to be in a Medicaid qualified nursing home, you have to, you, there's a waiting list. Yep. Listen, let's take a quick... So you can't just walk in there and say, give me a room. No, you can't. And, and we'll talk more about that. And also about, you know, ultimately when these things happen, what what occurs for these folks in their lives if they don't get anything? Where do they end up on the streets? But we'll get to that. Before we go to a break, Tim, we have a caller who called in real quick. Let's take Tom, and then we'll go to a break and continue our conversation. But let's start sure. off with Tom. Great. Tom, good morning. Hi, Tom. Good morning, people. Good morning. Uh, thank goodness. Your, your, your guest can chime in on this if he wants to. <coughs> uh, uh, we've, got, we've got a governor that loves guns and Jesus in that order. <laughs> this guy wore a Confederate Army uniform when he was a student at Auburn University to celebrate Old South Day. 
Okay, but what does now, that what have to do? We... What, what does that have to do with you know the seniors? Do, are, are you worried that the governor's not doing enough well, to help I'm seniors? I'm a senior. Okay. I'm 75 years old. Okay. <laughs> so what's <laughs> your question what it about has that? To do with it. Okay. Well, my, my, my thing is, what are we going to do? Protest to be, uh, against all this corruption? Oh, I don't know. I mean, look, and uh, listen, Tim, we're going to go to a break on that. He just wanted to spout off, which is fine, but that has absolutely nothing to do with our conversation. When people do that, they get cut off and we say goodbye. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Tim, we'll continue our conversation and we'll take calls perhaps from some others who have legitimate questions about uh, elder law. Stay with us. We'll be back after mm -hmm. this.